Hi guys. I am going to show you how to make these fun little virtual classrooms with your Bitmoji. Now to start off, make sure that you are using Google Chrome. I think that some people are experiencing errors because they're not using Chrome. Because Chrome is Google operated, it links up better with Google Classroom, Google Meet, Google Slides, obviously. So that would be my first um, suggestion. You also need to have your Bitmoji ready. This is something that you can do now or you can set up your virtual classroom and then do your Bitmoji and add it later. But the way that you would do that if you don't have a Bitmoji is you need to get the Bitmoji app. You can't do it on a computer, but this is where you would get it from or you can find it in the app store, it's free. Download the app and create your person. Now, once you've created your person, that's on your phone or whatever device you made it on, but to get it onto your computer, you need a Chrome extension. So I'll add a link to this in the description for the video. But basically, when you get here, all you do, instead of saying remove to Chrome, it will say add to Chrome and you'll add the extension. What that does, it only takes a minute, is it creates this little Bitmoji icon at the top, if you can see that right next to my picture. Hi. If you click on that there, it has all of the same Bitmojis you would find on your phone or on your iPad. All you do is copy them and then you paste them wherever you want them. So that just has a permanent little home right there. So again, you can make your Bitmoji now or you can finish this tutorial and come back to it and make it later after you finish designing your classrooms. Okay, so you're going to want to now open a brand new Google slide presentation. I know that we are all at different levels of experience. So if this is not something you are incredibly familiar with, but you do know how to get to Google, that makes it very easy. I'm gonna move my picture over here. If you see this little image right here with the nine dots, a little array, if you click on that, it's all of our Google apps. You can just click on slides. When you get to slides, you just click on a new one and it'll take you right here. So we don't need our text boxes for this. So I'm going to go ahead and just click on them and hit delete and get rid of them completely. So now we get to do my favorite part, which is the background. So what a lot of people have been doing is finding images online and inserting them as an image. But what happens is it gets moved around and misshaped and the kids, when they have access to the slides, can move it around too. But when you insert it as a background, it becomes immovable. You can't move it around at all. So I go through the background, I click choose image, and you can see these are the magic words that you want to search for your background. Floor and wall background. Because when you search, you get these options. So you look through, you pick which one you like, and all you do is click it once, hit insert, and it'll put it right in your slide. And you'll notice I can click, but it doesn't move at all. If you are like me and you're a little extra and you think, well, I don't like the options there and I want to have more than one room, you can Google search floor and wall background, which I've already done over here. And you can see there's so many more. You can just save the image or I screenshot them and upload them from your computer instead of doing the Google search. So that's just another option to get this floor and wall background here but we'll just stick with this one for today. So let's move on to adding some different materials and pieces of furniture to our classroom. So to add any images to this picture here, so we have our background, you'll do it the same way as you would add any image by going to insert an image. The only difference is we don't have these images on our computer, so you will click search the web. It's going to pull up this little sidebar here and you in this sidebar, let me move myself again, I keep getting in the way. You are going to want to type the word, oh no, transparent before anything you search. This will remove the background from almost all of the images. Now any search is not perfect, so you'll still find an image you love and insert it and it'll have background, but play around with it. So I do transparent couch image. So let's add a couch. Now I'm looking at these and you can tell some of them are real pictures, some of them are cartoons. It just depends on the look that you're going for. And again, you can still type the search into a regular Google search, which I've already done. 
and look through the ones that they have here. I love this couch. I didn't see this one earlier. It doesn't, oh, we'll see if it's transparent. For these, when you take them from Google, you'll just hit the copy. And then when you go back in here, you will hit paste and look, it's transparent. So I'm just going to resize that, make sure all four legs are on the floor and push it back a little bit further. Perfect. So I won't go through all the painstaking processes of adding all different pieces of furniture, but that's how you do it. If you wanted to pull from the side over here, you would click on an image, hit insert, and it would just drop it right in there for you. And then again, you can resize it. Now, here are some important things. So let's say that I wanted to insert a floor plant. These are actually hard to find. I am a plant person. So let's see. So you can see some of these options and you search things, they don't come up with a lot of different choices that you can use. So that's why I've gone to Google for a lot of my options. But we have this plant here. Now let's say we wanted to show that the plant was in the corner, but it's behind the couch. Right now, however many images you add, the last one that you add is kind of in the front. So if you actually right click this image, you can do order, send to back, which will put it as far back as the background. Or let's say you added the couch last and it went in front of it and you wanted the plant in front, you would go ahead and click on this right click again if it will let me and do rotate or order and spring to front. So you can play around with that. I have a comedy slide where there's a microphone. So I always send the microphone to the front and then I put my Bitmoji behind it. So it looks like I'm actually behind it. Another feature that I think is really important is the flip option. So when you put in, let's do another, a lot of people are putting laptops not a laptop a laptop image and they are putting them on a table somewhere let's say let's use this one Hit insert but let's say i had a table here and the table is going the other direction you can easily flip the images by right clicking again and then rotate you hit flip horizontally so right click rotate flip horizontally and it'll rotate that way so that's how you add just basic images from Google searches and from what they have already on here on Google Slides. Now I have a lot of wall art that I want to show you. The first and easiest thing to do is a whiteboard or a bulletin board. That's as simple as just adding in a square. Let's say I wouldn't put a whiteboard here if this was my classroom, but we're just saying, for example, it defaults to the white background. All you need to do is make that border about, let's say, eight point to make it look like a bulletin board. And then you want the border to be black. And there you already have it. I also add in little picture frames, which is even easier. So what I've done is I've gone into my teacher pay teacher account and I've looked at some of the pictures and decorations that I've purchased. I just screenshot them and then I insert them from my computer, shrink them down and put the border on. It's so easy. Let me show you. I actually went and I pulled up the teacher pay teacher posters that I had purchased. These are amazing and I just wanted to show this to you guys. I actually don't know her, but Ashley McKenzie made these posters and they are adorable. I have them in my actual classroom. But regardless, what you do is you just screenshot and I have a Mac, so that's just Command Shift 4 lets me grab a specific section. And I'm just gonna grab the poster exactly how I want it shown, like this, and it's going to just create a, sh a screenshot. And back here, I will hit insert image, and this time I'll do upload from computer. It's my only screenshot today. That's how you can tell I haven't really started my work yet for the day, but I will go ahead and hit open and it's going to be huge. Basically what you'll do is you'll make it the size that you want your little poster. And most of mine are not even readable, but because we have them in my classroom, my real classroom, the students recognize them and it kind of brings them that sense of their own classroom here. 
So I would probably make it a little bit smaller. And then again, I add the four point black border on to make it look like a frame. But if you had a brown themed room, you could make it brown. But there you go, it looks like you have a little framed poster on the wall. Another thing that I do is I put my videos on. I post a video for my students every day. And I also have a pet hedgehog, which is a fun fact. And so I've created a hedgehog movie theater where once a week we have a new showing and I'll put a YouTube link there too. Let's say I wanted to make this screen right here into a TV. What I would do is first I'd take a screenshot of what image I want to be shown on the TV. So the example I gave was my Wednesday video. It's my morning video to my students. So I am actually just going to grab this about there. And it's okay if those pieces in the bottom get in because we're showing that it's a video because it's on the TV. So for this, I will again go to insert, image, upload from computer, and I will find that picture and put it in. Now, I'm just going to shrink it down, try to make it fit so it's just a little bit smaller, so there's a little bit of white around the edges. Now, it's going to need to be cropped. Quick trick to crop is just double click your picture and drag that little guy up to where you want it. So there I have my video in the screen. But when you click on it, it doesn't do anything. So what I did is I took the link from the YouTube video that this screenshot is from. While I have the picture clicked and it's clicked because so I have this blue box around it, I click on this little link button right here. You can also do insert and then go down to link. And if I have the picture, highlighted or already clicked, all I do is I put my YouTube link in here and I hit apply. Now your students will need to be taught that they need to click on the picture in order for them to be able to see it. So for my, the first time that I did this, I showed a slide before that that said when you open the next slide on the real picture of me, click on the real picture of me. So then they knew that when they got here, they had to click on this to get to my YouTube video. You need to make sure that you screenshot your finished classrooms before you add any personalized information in there. What I mean is this, this slide is great for Wednesday because it has my Wednesday video in it. But what you want to do before you add any information in there, so here I have my blank classroom, all the furniture in place, things that I don't ever need to move. You will want to screenshot this, we're pretending this is my finished beautiful classroom. Create a new slide. And then if you remember how we did this before to add a background, you'll add that image of your made classroom into the background. So this time, instead of the Google image search, we're going back to upload, browse. And as you guys can see, I am just the screenshot queen. I will open that up. And what this does, is once I delete these text boxes is it makes it so that when you send this out to students they can't move anything around all of this is in place so now you can just duplicate this slide and make as many of them as you want and you can put your screenshot for your Tuesday video here on Tuesday and make a new slide and insert your Wednesday video. This just makes it so that your work is safe, but just please be warned that every time you screenshot it and reuse it, every screenshot, your words get blurrier. So if you look at this first one, you can almost read this sign, it's still a little blurry. But when you get to our screenshot version, it's a little bit more by the next one, you wouldn't be able to read it. So just keep that in mind. So now that we have finished that, we can talk about adding in different things like your Bitmoji or links. So let's just start with links. Okay, so I fixed up our classroom because it was driving me absolutely insane looking at it. But let's practice adding some links. If you saw what I had posted the other day on one of the Facebook groups, I have a link here. And when I click on it, it actually takes me directly to a Google Doc. And this is also super easy to do. So if I go back into here, instead of putting a picture here, we can put a text box. So right here, right next to the picture and the shape icon, we have text box. 
You can also do insert and do text box from there, whatever is easier for you. And you just go ahead and you would type your announcements here. Announcements. And if you wanted to add a link, all you do is you click insert and you have to be inside the text box. I've tried this when I don't have this little blinky line and it doesn't work, but insert and we go to link again. We're going to put a link here and it lets you use uh, or create your own what the link looks like. I don't know what that's called, but let's say for example, if you saw on Thursday, I posted my comedy show slides where I had students who were able to share a joke. So I made a joke Google form that they can access at any time where they can tell me a joke and the answer and they can be featured on our joke slide. So what I would do is I would hit send and I would get the link for this Google form. And when I go back into my slides, I would put that in the link box and text, I would say, click here to submit a joke. And when I hit apply, it creates that link for you. And when I click on this, we can test it out. It'll take me right to this Google form. The last thing I want to show you is adding in your Bitmoji. This is what it's all about, right? So we have our announcements, which are just to tell a joke. And let's go ahead and now Remember, you need to have your Bitmoji already created by now and you need to have the Google Chrome extension. If you don't have that yet, I want you to go all the way back to the beginning of the video. So if you've done it correctly, you're in Google Chrome and you have this little Bitmoji icon here. If you click on it, it'll show you your person. I've changed mine and I've put her into slippers and some sweats because it reflects my remote learning. But what you can do is you can flip through if you want them sitting, you can type in sit. There's only a couple, obviously we're not going to use all of them, but you can choose one. We can put me right on the couch. I just hit copy image and then paste. Paste, there we go and I can put her on the couch. Now, just like what you can do with the other objects that you have in the room, so you can resize her, you can also rotate and have me flipping, or oops, you can also rotate it and have me flip horizontally so I'm facing this way, okay? So that's how you add your Bitmoji. There are some that work and some that don't. To make it most realistic, realistic you want a head-to-toe image. Um, but you can be creative. So I will try to link all of the slides that I've created that don't already have my Bitmoji in them, like this one. Unfortunately, for some of mine, I've screenshot the background images with my Bitmoji in them. For example, this one doesn't move. So I will link um, below some of the backgrounds that I've created that don't have my Bitmoji built in, and you guys are free to use them as much as you want. I hope this was helpful. I think I covered anything. If you have any more questions, feel free to leave a comment and I'll see if I can get back to this. It's, um, it's been pretty entertaining for me to make these. So I hope that you guys get some joy out of it. I know it made my, my students really excited to see it and I didn't tell them I was doing it. So my only suggestion to you is if you go ahead and you do this the way that I've done it and you're going full in, start day one with some slides that start like this where you walk them through how to use each slide and its purpose. So here they knew to click on the video. Otherwise, this just looks like a picture, right? And here they know that this is a link. Same here, they know that this is a video because I've told them in this previous slide what to expect. So I hope you enjoyed this, guys. I hope this was helpful and I hope you have fun. See you later.